I'm led to the scripture, 1 Peter chapter 5. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Hallelujah. In verse 6, would you read it with me? 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 6, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now we've heard the scripture over and over, haven't we? Casting all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Remember I share with you that one of the things that the devil wants to do is make you think that God doesn't care for you, that he has forsaken you. Amen? <laughs> well, if our finite little peanut mind can comprehend that, it can't. But your spirit can. Because his words are light and they are spirit. That's why you got to take dominion over that mind, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. He says, be sober. Remember, be alert. Be on top of things. Be sensitive. Be vigilant. Don't give up. Because your adversary, the devil. Hold on, everybody say devil. devil. Now, we're not exalting the devil, are we? No, no we're exposing him. Yeah. The devil is what? Waiting to have lunch with you, right? Yeah. The thing is, is that he wants you to be the lunch. Hello. <laughs> be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can what? Devour. Uh, Hallelujah. You know how he feeds off of us? I don't know why we're going here, but God's got a plan. By your emotion. That's why fear, doubt, worry, all of these goofy things he feeds off. If he can entice you, pridefulness, that's an emotion. And it's also associated with the spirit of rebellion, which is witchcraft. <laughs> he shows up with his apron on and fork and knife, his table, those dinner tables that pop out. When he starts throwing stuff at you and shooting little darts at you, and then you start acting on them, he starts eating lunch. Then he invites his whole crew. The Bible says what? Resist him, in verse 9. Resist him. That's a real simple thing. You say, no. No. Resist him steadfast in the faith, because if you don't resist him in the faith, you don't have any. If you can't resist them, your faith just got plucked. There is no faith. If there's no resistance, there's no faith. Amen? Resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the what? Same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. <laughs> now may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by which Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, after you have what? Suffered a while. What? What's going to happen after you suffer a while? Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Let me share something with you, which is very important. What he's establishing here is your destiny. And the devil is going to oppose your destiny. He's going to do everything he can to prevent your destiny to be fulfilled. I want to talk about destiny. Amen? Destiny. Ooh, let me share with you a little bit what about destiny. Destiny is a representation of necessary successions of events resulting in an individual's cooperation to fulfill a predestined prophetic declaration. I'm going to repeat it. <laughs> For a purpose of life. you got to understand this was given by the Spirit. All right? I'm going to repeat this. What is destiny? A necessary succession of events resulting in an individual's cooperation to fulfill a predestined prophetic declaration. In other words, our purpose of life. <laughs> we got to hear from the Spirit first. You understand that? <laughs> I'll say that one more time. Necessary successions of events. How many of y'all going through events? That's part of your sufferings, right? <laughs> Resulting in an individual's cooperation to fulfill a predestined prophetic declaration. Who was the prophetic declaration declared by? God Almighty. Purpose of life. <laughs> Genesis chapter 1. What's my destiny? You're in it. You're in it. It's been pre-planned for you. We're well, going to talk about certain things that are as a part of our destiny. Now, we do have to cooperate with it, don't we? Because we can reject our destiny. Destiny is also a representation of, and we've talked about this before, things that we've inherited as a part of our destiny. Our inheritance from God is a part of our destiny, isn't it? Amen? In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creep and thing that creeps on the earth. That's your destiny. What is your destiny? To have 
the image of God and likeness. That's part of your destiny, isn't it? Why? Are you not the offspring of God Almighty? Yeah. Oh, the devil loves to play tricks, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. You know, he comes out with trick or treat, right? You know, God is our power and source. We are predestined. We have been predestined. <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Go to verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, and he created them. Then God did what? Is that part of your destiny? Yeah. Amen. You have to be walking in the image and likeness of God. Now, a representation of his character. Why? Because he's going to express himself through us. Adam and Eve was made in the image and likeness of God Almighty. He was made perfect. There wasn't a flaw in him. <laughs> he blessed him. He gave him power and dominion over all the earth, didn't he? The angels looked and said, what is God doing? Wait a minute. When they looked and they saw God making, manifesting, natural, tangible, and him taking the earth of clay and begin to mold them and then breathe his breath in them, they were baffled. They couldn't comprehend what God was doing. And they were right there on the scene. Oh, hallelujah. Then God blessed them. That's why people don't know who they are. They have to wait till they die and go home to find out. Why wait then? Walk your destiny out. That's why you hear people about dying and coming back, right? Yeah, man, it's beautiful over there. Whoa, great. I've been there. It's gorgeous. It's glorious. I don't want to come home. But I'm here. But see, even though that we're here, we're still there. Amen. The devil just don't want you to know it. Amen. He's trying to keep you on this side. Amen. So you won't fulfill your destiny. Oh, hallelujah. Then God blessed him and God said to him, be what? Fruitful and multiply. What a business. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. In other words, take dominion over every creep that there is. Right? Hallelujah. So God is our source and our power, isn't he? He's the one that predestined. He's the one that spoke this in. He said, it was your destiny. Me. Destiny. You are to be conformed to my image and likeness. You are. You were created. Adam and Eve was created in his image and likeness until they blew it and they lost it. Now, Jesus came to restore that image and likeness for me and you. So our destiny now is being restored. We have been restored. It's already done to walk in the same footsteps as Jesus walked. Amen? Remember, they were, we were created in His image and likeness. I'm going to share something with you that may sound a little wild sometimes, but we are share, we we were created in love. Let me explain something. You're not created for purpose. You are created in love first. God didn't create you to use you. God created you because He loved you, not for any purpose whatsoever. Just that. Love. Hallelujah. Somebody understand it. You and I were created out of love, not out of purpose. Purpose was secondary. Love was first. <laughs> Man's destiny was to fulfill the plan of God in submitting to his will. Man's destiny was considered to be eternal, fruitful, multiplying, prosperous, and rule with dominion over everything. Each choice is a moment of destiny. Does everybody understand that? Every choice you make is a moment of destiny. Whatever you choose to do is going to affect your destiny. Now, there is a destiny pre-planned for me and you, isn't it? And sometimes we're going to make wrong choices, aren't we? But his purpose is because he was, he is, and he always will be. <laughs> and I'm not going to go on all that tonight. But he was been, he's come before me and you to assist us in our destiny. He's already come before me and you. The word says that he died. He, he was slain before the foundations of the earth. <laughs> so he was slain before the earth was even created. Like I said, I'm 
not going to go into all this tonight. Maybe part two. <laughs> Hallelujah. Each choice is a moment of destiny. Oh, to God be the glory. Go to Lamentations. Chapter 1. It's near Jeremiah. We don't go there too much. I'm not much of a lamentation. <laughs> I like to stay in the joy of the Lord. <laughs> Take up a lamentation. Oh, not again. <laughs> lamentation chapter 1. In verse 8. Hallelujah. See, you know what? Something's happening even right now. I sense it in the Spirit. Something's happening even right now. Do I know what it is? I don't know. But it's like some... I, I see... Let me show you what I see. I see... God's fingers, God's hand going in everybody's heart. That's what I'm seeing right now. His hand, his fingers are going in everybody's heart. <laughs> and verse 8, would you read it with me? Jerusalem has sinned gravely. Gravely, that means deadly, huh? Therefore she has become vile. All who honor her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yes, she sighs and turns away. Her uncleanliness is in her skirts. She did not consider her what? Destiny. My God, my God. See, when you begin to consider your destiny, things begin to change. Because you must first understand that you are created out of love and the purpose of a destiny to be his offspring of God Almighty. And the devil always wants to breach that. Does everybody understand that? You know why? Because the first purpose that God created me and you was for relationship. <laughs> uh, out of love. She did not consider her destiny. Therefore, her collapse was awesome. She, did, she had no comforter. Oh, Lord, behold my affliction. For the enemy is exalted. The adversary has spread his hand over all her pleasant things. For she has seen the nations enter her sanctuary. Those whom you commanded not to enter your assembly. What did she do? She forsook her destiny. She didn't consider who she was. She didn't consider what her purpose was. She forsook her destiny. She forsook the call of God. She forsook everything. For the loss of the world. Amen. Choice results in event of destru destruction. That's why the word says, what you sow is what you reap. She lost sight of plan and purpose. She did not consider her destiny. Every choice you make results in an event of either walking into destiny or event of destruction. Because what you sow is what you reap. Amen. And the devil is always going to try to get you to forsake your destiny. That's his job. Ephesians chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1. Start at verse 3 with me. Hallelujah. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Hello. That's your destiny. Isn't it? That's a part of your destiny. That's parts of you. Why? Because your spirit. Listen, if God is omnipresent and you're one with God, then you know where you are. Hello? You know, when I had my encounter with the Lord, it was like every human being, when, I, when the Lord showed up, every human being I became connected with. <laughs> Instantaneously. Every human being. I don't know if they, I, I, I can only sense, I mean, it happened so quickly and so rapidly, but it was every human being, and, and, and I began to feel the pains of mankind, and I began to rip and tear and weep and cry. I thought I was going to be ripped apart from the pain of mankind. I became one because he's one with everyone. See, in spirit, you and I are one. We're actually omnipresent with our daddy. The common mind can't comprehend that. 
is me Ravu, revealed by the Spirit, in your spirit. Not that we're God, do you understand that? But we're his offspring. So we're blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. <laughs> that means a place that you can't see. It's ours. Just as he chose us where? Come on, read this with me. Verse 4. Just as he chose us where? Wait, wait. In him. You're not I him. You're in him. Before what? The foundation of the world. So you were already in him before he even created you. Well, we're getting somewhere I didn't really want to get to, but... See, he's come before you already and already set your predestiny. He knew the mistakes you were already going to make. He already knew the choices you were going to make. But he's a father of love. He's doing everything according to his own creation to cause us to right, walk in the right path of predestined. Destined. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should what? Be holy. And without blame before him in what? Oh, oh glory to God. Wow. Having what? Predestined us to adoption. Now listen, if he predestined us to be adoptions of sons, he knew that we were going to blow it. He already set a reconciliation plan before anything was. He hadn't predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to who? Himself. <laughs> According to the good pleasure of His what? Will. So it was His will. He, he did it because He loves us. He knew that Adam and Eve was going to blow because He went before them. But He will not interfere with your free will. Even though you've been predestined, he'll never interfere with your free will. It's where the carnal mind can't comprehend it. That's where the confusion comes of once saved, always saved. That means that you're a robot then. That means you have no choice in anything. But you do. Okay? Let's go a little further. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us what? Accepted in the beloved. The beloved what? The beloved family of God Almighty. See, everyone in here is a brother and sister. You have now come from the womb of God, not from the womb of man. That's why your outwardness is going to stay. Because this came from a womb of man. But you came from the womb of God. So this is going to get tossed. Glory to God. And verse 7. Is everybody with me? In him, say in him. We have what? Redemption through his blood. Not out of him, but in him. See, we're still in him. That means daddy's right in this room. Hello. He's got to be in the room. Because we're in him. <laughs> in him we have redemption through the, his blood for the forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his what? Ah, oh, His grace. Grace means hold back judgment. His grace means favor. His grace means plan of redemption and action. Remember, mercy means he's consi He considered it the plan. Grace means He put it in action. Is everybody with me? Mercy means He considered the plan. Grace means He put it in action. That's why Jesus came in the fullness of what? Grace and truth which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the what? Mystery. That's your destiny. Every one of us has a specific mystery that God has predestined for me and you of his will and purpose. Every one. In that mystery is not only the revelations of God, but it's the revelation of who you are in Christ and what your purpose is. That's your destiny. Having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in all one, uh, in one all things in Christ. So he's going to gather us all, isn't he? Amen. Both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Where? In him. In him also we have obtained a what? Inheritance. Oh, an inheritance. That's part of your destiny, isn't it? 
In fact, your inheritance is going to affect your destiny. Did you ever notice someone who got a bunch of money? Man, it did affect their destiny. <laughs> Hello? And being what? Predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So he's working all things according to the counsel of his will for me and you. But each one of us has a specific destiny to fulfill the will of God for all creation. That we who first trusted Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with what? Holy Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit of promise. So we know that he is the director of our destiny. That's why people who do not have a fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it makes it difficult. Without fellowship with the Holy Spirit, there is no relationship. It's relationship with knowledge and not the person. Has everybody got it? Who is the what? Guarantee of our inheritance, because that's part of your destiny, isn't it? Until the what? Redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Is everybody all right? Now listen. We're blessed. We're chosen before the foundation or creation. Of course, I already shared with you that he was already here ahead of us. And he already prepared reconciliation because he knew that man was going to blow it. We've been accepted the way we are. Hallelujah. <laughs> His will is our destiny. Our will can change the course because we are created with love, not purpose. Remember that. We're created with love, number one. Purpose is second. But the main thing is love, isn't it? Yeah. And inheritance is a part of our destiny. <laughs> now listen to this. Your destiny is His purpose. Okay? Not yours. See, you were created out of love. That's number one. Not a purpose. The purpose is second. Now, our purpose, okay, our destiny is His purpose. Not ours. See, if we can really grasp hold of that, then we'll understand it's no longer we that live with Him that lives within us. Your destiny is His purpose. Not yours. You were not created for a purpose. It was his purpose. You were created out of love. It's amazing how people want to go out and do all kinds of stuff and still don't know who he is. They want to teach. They want to preach. They want to do all kinds of stuff, but they don't even know who he is. They're, talking to, they're trying to tell people about something they read and never met him. Something they studied and went to school for, but they never met him. Oh, I'm not going there. First Corinthians chapter 2. Hallelujah. It takes a touch. That's all it takes, right? Yeah, a right. touch. <laughs> One touch. First Corinthians chapter 2. So you and I were sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's when we get baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. He's the one who assists and directs your destiny. That's why it's so important to hear. Amen. In verse 6, would you read it with me? However, we speak wisdom among those who are what? Mature. Yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. They're coming to nothing. Why? Remember, truth is knowledge understood. If the knowledge is not understood, it's no longer truth. That's what brings people in bondage. People read the word of God, and they try to throw religion on you. Man, what you got a ponytail for? That offends God. Man, you just offended God for saying it. Hello? God does not judge by sight, does he? He judges by the heart. The thing is, he's trying to reveal our heart to us. He already knows it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number seven. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? In a mystery. There's a specific hidden mystery. Things that are hidden are known as mysteries, aren't they? Yeah. Now, it's a revelation of who God is. Amen. Amen. And who you are in Him. Amen. In Him. Not without Him. Because you're nothing without Him. Yeah. And what your destiny is. And it's revealed through His Spirit. In Him. And you. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. For whose glory? 
our glory. Come on, read it with me again. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of for our glory, which none of the rulers of the age knew, for if they had known, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, that's your destiny, isn't it? But it's for whose purpose? His. Did we got it? Your destiny is his purpose. <laughs> and verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his what? What's he revealing through us? Our destiny. Through, his, through who? His spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the what? Now, doesn't that make sense to you that without the spirit of God and the revelation in the, uh, of the, even with the gifts of revelation, knowledge of truth, that if you just read the word without the spirit, it's just letter. Amen? And it brings people in bondage. Now, there are times when you're going to have to lay everything down and just get in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? Because when you just get in the Spirit, see, first of all, God is not bound by a binder. <laughs> Amen. Amen? He's not bound by a binder. In fact, He's a lot more than what's just written. Oh, a lot more. I mean, come on, He always was, always will be. How could you put it in how many pages? Let's see, this one's got, uh, I don't know, 1,200, 1,700, something, 1,800 pages. Can you imagine putting God in 1,800 pages? No way. No way. This is a door. This is a door to the revelation knowledges and the mysteries of God. This guides us into the Spirit, doesn't it? Amen. Why? Because you want to know what your destiny is. Now, the devil is always going to try to get you out of position of destiny. That's his job. Amen. Amen? That's what he does. How many times has he gotten all of us out of position of our destiny? Number one thing is pride. Amen. You know, in our discipleship program, we see many people leave after a couple months. You know why? They get knowledge and they think they've made it. Oh, God told me to leave. <laughs> well, I thought God told you to come. Well, he told me to leave. No, no, God never interrupts himself. Hello? Oh, hallelujah. I love when that happens. I mean, I don't love when it happens, but it just blows my mind. It's like, come on, let me slap the soul out of you. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. Is everybody all right? Come on, let's go on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And verse 12. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might what? No. Know the things that have been freely given to us, that we might know. That means you've got to get in the spirit to know what your destiny is. And let me share something with you. Your destiny is not just going to be written out. It was already predestined. It's already done. He's asking you not to learn it. He's asking you to walk it. There's a difference. Hello? Because, see, God isn't going to... He's not going to come on and give you a book and say, okay, this is what you're going to do for the rest of your life. Then you'd be bound. <laughs> you'd be bound. Then it wouldn't be a relationship. You'd follow the book. And that's what people do with the Bible. They follow the Bible instead of the leading of the Spirit. Amen. Now, the Bible is the tutor, but the Spirit is the mentor. Has everybody got it? Yes, we must understand the mentor. We must understand the mentor. Then you'll understand the tutor. <laughs> oh, come on, get it, will ya? <laughs> I love you, Lord. Freely given to us, hallelujah. In verse 13, these things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom, carnal peanut brain, teaches... 
but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. Now, what's the devil always trying to do? Keep you in the carnal. So you can't fulfill your destiny that God has predestined for you. For they are what? Foolishness to him. Oh, man, this just doesn't make sense. Of course it doesn't. You're not supposed to understand it. You're supposed to love him and trust him. Nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discernible. Well, now, who are you going to well, Let me tell you something. If you haven't got a fellowship with the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to discern nothing. You're going to use everything in a carnal, carnal arena. Do you know that there are people who cannot read the Bible at all? And they know God. They know Him. I know, I know powerful men of God that could barely read. And they can only read a little bit today. But let me tell you something. They know the voice of God. Amen. And they know what to do, where to go, what to do. And they, I, 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 I met a man. Man, he's probably about 60-something, 70 years old now. And, and when I first got saved, I used to pray with him. And he, you couldn't, he could only read a few things. In fact, the only thing that he could read a little bit of was the Bible. But he would sit there and listen to the Holy Spirit. His mother packed him a lunch when he was 16 or 17 and said, go. He said, what do you mean? I can't read. I'm uneducated. She said, listen to the Holy Spirit. She pushed him out. Now this man feeds people, owns property and all kinds of stuff. He's a millionaire, all leading by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. We used to pray in the morning. He, couldn't, he didn't pray great prayers. You know, he'd say, Father, fix it. That's what he would say. And God would fix it. You know why? Because he had a relationship with the person, not the letter. He knew him. And he waited for him to bring him direction. Because he was fulfilling his destiny without letter. Ooh. Now, I'm not telling everybody to throw your Bible away. Amen? I want you to know the Word. But I want you to get revelation of the importance of having fellowship in the Spirit. Because that's who your destiny is going to be guided by. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's go further. <laughs> The Holy Spirit searches the perfect will of God for your predestined plan hidden in the mystery. It is unraveled layer by layer. It gets unraveled layer by layer. It doesn't come at all once. I still don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. If I ever grow up. I'll always be a child in front of the eyes of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Romans 8. In verse 5. We all know this. Would you read it with me? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now, when he's talking about the things of the flesh, he's not talking about things of perverseness and the fruits of the flesh. He's talking about the things that are tangible. They rely on their carnal senses. They rely on what they see and what they feel. They rely on what others are doing. They go with the trend. If it tastes good, eat it. If it feels good, do it. That's carnal. That's not listening to the voice of God. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is what? Death. 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 But to be spiritually minded is what? Life. Life and peace. See, if you're tormented, undecided, confused, that's not peace. That means that you're not in relationship with the Holy Spirit in that decision or whatever you're supposed to do. If there's confusion, unrest, torment, and not peace. That's not fellowship with your heavenly father. That's fellowship with another spirit. Most likely a familiar one. 
who likes to come to you as a Holy Spirit. Hi, I'm the Holy Spirit. I know you don't know me. And he's right. You don't know him. Because unless you don't know the Holy Spirit, you only have discernment of who isn't the Holy Spirit. Hello? Okay, where are we? <laughs> because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Listen, your carnal mind is against the will of God. And the devil uses your carnal mind to trick you. To make you think you're doing the will of God. Didn't Saul think he was doing the will of God when he was killing everybody? Man, he thought, man, he was waiting for purple hearts when he got home. Hello? He was waiting for great rewards. I'm going to kill. Look at all the Ishmael, Islamic. They're out there murdering people and waking up in hell, not heaven. And I think they're dying for God. They're dying for the devil. And the devil's family is increasing. Not a very good family to belong to. We've been rescued from that family. That's why we've been adopted. <laughs> Glory to God. Get ye behind me, family of old. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. But it's sure subject to a lot of knowledge. Hello? A lot of worldly stuff. A lot of desires, a lot of me, myself, and I, and selfishness, and greed, and bitterness, loves that stuff. Unforgiveness, accusations, loves all that stuff. Ooh, gets real puffy. Yeah, I'm bad. <laughs> I'm so bad I can't walk straight. Can't even walk upright. But I can quote every scripture there is and tell you what page it is. I'm so bad. Oh, I'll so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Hello? It's real simple. You can't please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, if you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, hallelujah, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Now He's talking about fulfillment of redemption. This little flesh suit that you have on is going to be torn away. Amen? So we got to be careful of what we set our minds on. When we set our minds on worldliness and things of the world and self, which is of the world. Hello? Then we can't fulfill destiny in the perfect will of God, which God sent for you before you were. One fulfilled promise of this predestined destiny is a new body, life, peace, and eternity. You turn to Ephesians 4. If I start speeding up, you know why. We're running out of tape. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Now that we're fulfilling some of the foundation of this. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, how many y'all predestined? Amen. You walking in your destiny right now? Yes. Yes. If you're in this room right now, you're walking in your destiny. If you're in your in this if you're in this room right now, hello. <laughs> Are you in this room right now? Good. Then you're walking in your destiny. If you're in this room and not in this room, you're in trouble. <laughs> Don't let that go over. Grab it. <laughs> Verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, to be edified. Till we all come to the uni unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, 
to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that you may understand Him, and you can only understand who He is by the Spirit. Other than that, you still see Jesus walking around as a Jew. Hello? But the Bible says that He's got wool and hair, fiery eyes. Hello? He don't look like no Jew no more. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in what? Love may grow up in all things. Say grow up. Grow up. Praise God. In all things into Him who is the head, Christ. So He wants us to grow up in Him. See, that's where you have to be careful because knowledge can grow you up without Him. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share. That's why we are predestined to do something, aren't we? Yes. That we're, we're doing our share to bring edification to the body of Christ. And not only why you're bringing edification to the body of Christ of what you've been predestined and your plan is in the body of Christ, the, the fullness of Christ is being manifested in you. By the Holy Spirit, your mentor. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by which every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Alleluia. So knowledge, hello, without understanding is not truth. But knowledge with understanding is truth. That's why people are get free. Being alienated from the life of God, which is the destiny that is prepared for you. Because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, hello, have given themselves over to lewdness, to the work of all cleanliness with what? Greediness, but you have not so what? Learn. Learned Christ. Amen. There it is. You've not learned Christ. Everybody all right? Amen. Glory to God. Let's go to Romans 12. Since we are the offsprings of His glory, from wisdom and knowledge prepared for us in our destiny, we become like a caterpillar who gets in the cocoon who becomes a butterfly. Everybody understand that? Now, does a caterpillar know what's what? No, he's predestined. He just does it, doesn't he? Eats, 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 and eats. And if there's a, a there's an eating part. There's a training. You know that you and I are going from glory to glory, right? Amen. Well, listen, once you get through this boot camp, there's another one waiting. I'm in boot camp again. Lord already let me know. I'm in boot camp big time. Officers training school. I'm in boot camp. Lord let me know. You're back in boot camp, guy. It's okay. What are we doing? Time to die again. To this, this, that. I love death. I can't wait to go home. I'm not afraid to die. And you can't affect a dead person. So when the devil threatens you with death, you say, wait a minute, I'm already dead. What's your problem, man? You can't kill something that's already dead. Oh, hallelujah. See, the whole thing is people want to keep alive. For what? He said we're going to lose our life so we can have one. Yes. See, then what happens is you struggle to try and keep your life. And you walk in the flesh. And you're walking bullseye. But if you're willing to lose your life, he'll keep it. That's when the battle belongs to the Lord and not you. Hello? That's the hardest thing people have going. I mean, you know, really. A burden comes, somebody gets offended, this, this, whatever. Oh, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to die. I'm going to find out. 
you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable which is your reasonable service to God right so what do you, he, listen he didn't say anything else he said man just give it to me quit trying to fulfill your own destiny when you fulfill your own destiny it's your purpose remember your purpose your destiny is his purpose not yours but he said hey give it to me anyways Pre present it to me will you it's a living sacrifice. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And we talked about the three wills of God before, haven't we? Of course, we know that renewed mind here means fulfill your destiny to prove his purpose of love. That's what you're doing. See, you're co-laboring with God, aren't you? To fulfill, to prove his will. What's his will? Now, now listen, his will, okay, is his purpose, isn't it? Amen? Which is your destiny. Now, what are you trying to prove? His love. You're trying to prove his love. Yeah. If you were created out of love, now you're going back to trying to prove his love. Amen? That's the, that's the whole purpose. There's your destiny. In the meantime... You're growing, you're learning, you're moving, you're walking in the body of Christ, you're fulfilling positions, you're doing what you're supposed to do now, not tomorrow, not yesterday, now. You can only fulfill destiny in present. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 5. Praise be to my Father. Ephesians cha uh, chapter 5 and verse 8. My goodness. Hallelujah. And would you read it with me? For you were once what? darkness but now you are light in the Lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness righteousness and truth finding out what is acceptable to the Lord amen how are you going to find out what's acceptable to him see when you find out what's acceptable to him you're fulfilling your destiny see one of the things that we must learn is his character amen you know, when somebody hangs around with one another long enough, they, they rub off in each other. You know what I'm saying? When you hang around with the Lord long enough, He rubs off on you. You don't rub off on Him. <laughs> Thank God. You begin to learn His character. You begin. You don't even have to pray about something. You know what pleases Him. And see, when you begin to learn that, you're, you're walking in your destiny then. Why? What are you doing? You're proving His love. Hello? Because your destiny is his purpose. You better write all this down. And explain it to me later. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where are we? <laughs> In verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Now, the purpose of the manifestation of light is to expose darkness that will hinder your destiny. Amen? 
if it's going to hinder your destiny, then God's purpose is not being fulfilled and His love is not being proved. Does everybody understand that? Good. Go to Joel. Joel chapter 2. Wow. Joel chapter 2. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Is everybody okay? I know this is kind of wild in certain areas. But praise God, you'll get it. By the Spirit. If you don't get it, get in the Spirit. And get the tape. <laughs> Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will what? Pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days. One of the things, where destiny involves vision and dreams. You must have vision. Amen? You must have vision. Not only keeps us on course, but grants us hope. How many times have you had a vision you knew or a dream? Oh, man. God was trying to tell you something, right? It's a part of your destiny. It's a, it's a part of your inheritance to have dreams and visions. Remember, your destiny, your inheritance is involved in your destiny, isn't it? Amen. We're to ask God for dreams and vision and revelation because it's gonna, it, that's what helps us stay on course, especially when we're not listening. But we must have vision. And one of the things that the devil wants to do is steal vision from you. Go to John 16. John 16 and verse 14 and 15. Glory to the Lamb. John 16 and verse 14. Well, we can, no. let's start at 12. <laughs> Hallelujah. I still, Jesus said, I still have many things to say to you, but you can't bear them now. They couldn't get it, could they? They needed to have the Holy Ghost. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into what? Oh, why is there so much stuff going on? Why is there denominations? Why is there division in the body of Christ? Because they're not in the spirit of truth. Amen. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Praise God. It's going to assist your destiny, isn't it? He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. Listen, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Let me tell you something. You've got to get understanding and revelation that the Father, you and I are in God, and everything that's his is ours. In other words, you have access to everything you need to fulfill your destiny. Everything you need is available to you to fulfill your destiny. Why do you want to fulfill your destiny? Because it's His purpose. And what are you doing? I'm proving His love. Amen. Then He's saying, listen, if you love one another, people will know that you're my disciples. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we need to get sight of all of these things, don't we? We need to get sight. We need to have vision that all things are ours already, predestined before you were even created. Jesus prepared everything for us. Go to Matthew chapter 5. And verse 8. It says, what? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will all what? They God. shall see God. And one of the things that affects people from that will cause blindness is a corrupt heart. Amen? It causes blindness. As a contaminated heart will cause blindness. A pure heart will able to allow you to see. A prideful heart, a bitter heart, it's all contamination. Remember, your heart is the character of your spirit. That means that the devil has contaminated your spirit with something. Bitterness, hatred, whatever it may be. Those things will bring blindness to you. They will not allow you to see. And what's the devil want to do? I mean, come on, he's trying to use everybody to hurt somebody so they can become blind and then you can move them out of destiny and then they won't fulfill the destiny which is God's purpose and then you can't prove God's love. Now, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, how I know that. 
First Corinthians chapter one and verse uh, twenty-six. Is everybody there? Amen. For you, what? Well, I sure hope you do. <laughs> you see your destiny. Do you understand that? That's what he's talking about. Your calling is your destiny. You see your destiny. In other words, you might not see the plan, but you know you have one. <laughs> Come on, does everybody get it? You don't have to see it to know it. You just got to know it. And you only know that by relationship and fellowship with the Spirit. <laughs> Uh, for you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the bad things of the world, and the base things of the world, I mean, <laughs> and the bad things of the world. <laughs> it was me at one time, glad I got it. And the base things of the world... And the things which are despised, God has chosen, it was me too. And the things which are not, well, that was me, I wasn't, to bring to things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Praise God. In other words, you can't take any credit for what God is doing. But I studied harder to get where I am. Oh, are you a little flesh creature? If you're in the spirit, you know. The Bible says that God has put his laws in our mind, in our spirit. So the Bible is already in you, even beyond the Bible, what's written. All things are in you. Jesus just said, my Father has declared all things to me, and I declared all things to you. So everything is in you. But see, we're so busy going everywhere else. Hallelujah. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to go further. Okay. Verse 30. But of him you are what? In Christ Jesus, who became for us, who became for us, he became for us the wisdom from God. And righteousness and sanctification and redemption. He became it all. That is written, he who glories, that I'm glory in the Lord. Glory to God, because you and I didn't do nothing. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. I feel time pressing me. <laughs> One day I won't anymore. Glory to God. <laughs> no, out of the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And verse 17. Those who are listening to this tape. If you hear some things that are strange, praise God. <laughs> and get understanding. <laughs> now the Lord is the Spirit, in verse 17, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Yeah. Hallelujah. Liberty, man. Liberty. Liberty. How many times the devil beat you up? Man, you know you didn't study enough today. You know you didn't pray enough today. You know you didn't do this enough today. You know you didn't do that enough today. Hello? We can never do enough. Do you understand that? Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. You know, you can't even walk out and live a Christian life. You know that you can't. Only by the Spirit. That's it. You can't even walk upright. Only by the Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. But we all, with verse 18, when you read it with me? But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in the mirror, the, the glory of the Lord is being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. How many times you get into something, you're going, man, I've got to go through this again. What's going on? I've got to do this. I've got to do that. You're in suffering. You're being perfected. You know what? It's an opportunity to change. Because you're going from glory to glory. You're going from boot camp to boot camp. <laughs> Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not, what? Lose heart. And you can't lose heart, can you? Ephesians chapter 4. Glory to God. Is everybody all right? 
Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 1. Is everybody there? And let's read it together. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. I am a Paul. Now, check this out. Paul's like going, you know what? I'm a prisoner of the Lord, and I love it. I love it. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. He's a prisoner of the Lord. Now, wait a minute. The Bible says, and the Lord is the what? Spirit. He was a prisoner of the Holy Spirit. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which, with which you were called, that destiny. Walk worthy of it. Prove it. With all lowliness, gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in what? What? Because that's what you're proving, God's love, aren't you? Hello? I don't need to go any further there, do I? <laughs> okay. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. Second Peter chapter 1. Let me just share something with you. He talks about six things right here. The number six means man, doesn't it? He says, loneliness, gentleness, long-suffering, in love. Verse 3. Enduring to keep the what? Unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Unity and peace. Those six things. He's talking about six things that are going to assist you in your destiny. The first one is what? Loneliness, gentleness, long-suffering, love. Unity and peace. Those six things are going to assist you in your destiny. Glory to God. Second Peter chapter 1. Did everybody get that? From verses starting at 2. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God of, our, of Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, read it with me. As His divine power has given to us all things. Don't you love that? <laughs> That pertain to life or pertain to your destiny. Amen. Pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be what? Partakers of the what? Divine. Glory to God. You know what you're doing? You're proving His love. Yeah. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Woohoo! But also for this reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, uh-oh, contaminated. For he lacks these things as short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Oh, and he who is in Christ is a new creation. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent, be even more diligent to make your call and election, your sure. destiny, sure. For if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. Never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you Hallelujah will be supplied to you. <laughs> what now? Abundantly. Abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Romans 8 and 28. Hallelujah. Would you read it with me? <laughs> and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. Hallelujah. So when you blow it, God is still trying to bring your destiny in fulfillment, isn't he? Isn't that wonderful? So when you miss God, you can repent and, and you're back on course. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are what? Called, which means destiny, according to his what? Purpose. Hallelujah. Your destiny is his purpose. And you're to prove his love by fulfilling your destiny. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's you, man. Amen. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own Son, but delivered him up for you and me, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things that are needed to fulfill the destiny? 
Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Are you God's elect? Amen. Amen. It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for me and you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or fatigue, or fear, or bitterness, or offense, or persecution, or famine, or fame, or pride, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all of these things we are more than conquerors through him who what? Loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creep or creature or cre created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Second Timothy chapter 2. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. You're going to get enough word in you tonight It's going to choke you so you can become a new creation <laughs> and fulfill your destiny. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 2. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Thank be to God. In verse 19, Second Timothy. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from what? Iniquity. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Why, that's your destiny, isn't it? Flee also useful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Hallelujah. Now you're associating with those who can see. Amen? Is everybody with me? Let's go to Genesis 16. Now, I want to share with you about destiny that the devil tried to prevent. Genesis 16. Abram, or Abraham, who, and Sarah were promised a son to carry on the inheritance in the promised seed of God. Now, the devil attacked Sarah and said, listen, that promise hasn't been fulfilled yet. And I'm feeling mighty guilty. And I can't wait for God anymore because you know what? I'm caught up in the natural realm. I'm, I'm going to die before this child is born. So you know what, honey? She said to Abraham, go into my maidservant and have this kid, that seed of promise. Well, she had the kid, the maidservant, Hagar. But it was not the seed of promise because God, what God says, you cannot, you cannot, okay, alter what God has brought forth for a destiny. Do you understand that? Listen, there's only one perfect will. That's it. There's one perfect will. Just like in that movie with uh, bagger bands or whatever. There's one perfect swing. There's one perfect hit that gets that ball over the fence. There's one perfect throw. There's, one per there's only one perfect choice. That's God's perfect will. There's not two. There's only one perfect choice that is the perfect will of God. Nothing else. He doesn't give us choices for a perfect will. You have the choice of good, acceptable, or perfect. Is everybody all right? Praise God. So we know that Sarah didn't make the perfect choice. <laughs> Amen. In verse 1, and it says, Now Sarah, Abram's wife, had borne him no ch children, and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Hagar. So Sarah said to Abram, See now the Lord has restrained me from being uh, bearing children. Now that was a lie, wasn't it? She accepted what the devil said. And she got off course, didn't she? Please go in my maid, 
Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abram, Abram heeded the voice of his wife. Well, he bit the bait. Amen? That's what happened to Adam, right? No offense at women. I mean, come on. we're all one flesh. <laughs> we're all boneheads. <laughs> Praise God. But see, you got to understand that the head of the house was known as the man. It was his responsibility to protect his family and hear the voice of God. Because God appeared to Abram many times over and over. And he knew the promise of God, didn't he? Yeah. So even when his wife started going off course, he should have said, No, I know what God said. He didn't have to say it that way. But. <laughs> Hallelujah. So anyways, we know that they went off course, and she bore a child called Ishmael. Ishmael. Now, I'm, I'm going to go to verse 11 just to show you something. Just so it brings us up to date of what's going on over in Iraq and so forth. Go to verse 11. An angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child, and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. He shall be a wild man. See what this religion is producing? His hand shall be against every man. Look what's going on over there. And every man, every man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of his brethren. Look what's going on right now. He's against everything, isn't it? Ishmael, Islamic. That's where we get it from. It's going against every man. It's trying to destroy all mankind. They don't even understand it. Does everybody understand? Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Everybody's all right? Hallelujah. So Isaac was the promised seed. Ishmael was not. Eventually, Sarah had the promised seed because God was faithful to fulfill what he said he was going to do. Amen. So don't, don't go ahead of God. You'll produce an Ishmael. That's what gets us in trouble. We go ahead of God. Verse 3, what does it say? Trust in the Lord and do good. Hello. Dwell on the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall what? Bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Now go to verse 23. While we're there. The steps of a good man are what? Ordered by the Lord. Is that your destiny? Amen. And his delight, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging bread. Amen. He is ever merciful in lens, and his descendants are what? Blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. Are you a saint? Yeah. They are preserved forever, but the descendants of the wicked shall be what? The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it for what? Yeah. Ever. Go to verse 39. But the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them, and he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him, you cannot fulfill your destiny without trust. It won't work. <laughs> it just won't work. Go to Proverbs 3. Gladius. In verse 5 it says what? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Every part of your being. Every decision. Everything. You must trust Him. But you're looking for the perfect choice every time. So that's his perfect will. His perfect will is involved in your destiny. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own carnal understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. In other words, don't trust what you know. Trust who you know. <laughs> Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. James 4. Praise God. James chapter 4 and verse 13. Would you read it with me? Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? What is your destiny? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. 
Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or do that. But now you boast in your arrogance, all such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin, or to him it is association with the presence of evil. And destiny will be altered, won't it? Amen. And I'll close at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, is everybody okay? Yes. Are you getting it? Thank you, Jesus. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 13. I'm going to close at this, so I'd like everyone to read it. Get it in your spirit. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth.